I turn first to our decisions on tax. I have tried to be fair by following two broad principles. Firstly, we ask those with more to contribute more, and secondly, we avoid the tax rises that damage growth. Although my decisions today do lead to a substantial tax increase, we have not raised headline rates of taxation, and tax as a percentage of GDP will increase by just 1% over the next five years. I start with personal taxes. Asking more from those who have more means that the first difficult decision I take on tax is to reduce the threshold at which the 45p rate becomes payable from £150,000 to £125,140. Those earning £150,000 or more will pay just over £1,200 more in tax every year. We're also taking difficult decisions on tax-free allowances. I'm maintaining at current levels the income tax personal allowance, higher rate threshold, main national insurance thresholds and the inheritance tax thresholds for a further two years, taking us to April 2028. Even after that, we'll still have the most generous set of tax-free allowances of any G7 country. I'm also reforming allowances on unearned income. The dividend allowance will be cut from £2,000 to £1,000 next year and then to £500 from April 24. The annual exempt amount for capital gains tax will be cut from £12,300 to £6,000 next year and then £3,000 from April 24. These changes still leave us with more generous allowances than countries like Germany, Ireland, France and Canada. Because the OBR forecast half of all new vehicles will be electric by 2025, to make our motoring tax system fairer, I've decided that from then, electric vehicles will no longer be exempt from vehicle excise duty. Company car tax rates will remain lower for electric vehicles, and I've listened to industry bodies and will limit rate increases to one percentage point a year for three years from 2025. The OBR expects housing activity to slow over the next two years, so the stamp duty cuts announced in the mini-budget will remain in place, but only until the 31st of March 2025. After that, I will sunset the measure, creating an incentive to support the housing market and the jobs associated with it by boosting transaction during the period the economy most needs it. I now turn to business taxes. While I've decided to freeze the employer's NICS threshold until April 2028, we will retain the employment allowance at its new higher level of £5,000. This means 40% of all businesses will pay no NICS at all. The VAT threshold is already more than twice as high as the EU and OECD averages. I will maintain it at that level until March 26. My right hon. Friend the Prime Minister successfully negotiated a landmark international tax deal to make sure multinational corporations, including big tech companies, pay the right tax in the countries they operate. I will implement these reforms, making sure the UK gets our fair share. Yeah. Alongside further measures to tackle tax avoidance and evasion, this will raise an additional £2.8 billion by 2728. I have also heard concerning reports of abuse and fraud in R&D tax relief for SMEs, so I have decided today to cut the deduction rate for the SME scheme to 86 per cent and the credit rate to 10 per cent, but increase the rate of the separate R&D expenditure credit from 13 per cent to 20 per cent. Despite raising revenue, the OBR have confirmed that these measures have no detrimental impact on the level of R&D investment in the economy. Ahead of the next budget, we will work with industry to understand what further support R&D-intensive SMEs may require. 